Uh, my name is Michael Shee, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of GSI's approaches to Earth observation over the years. As I'm sure you're aware, this year we are celebrating 175 years of the GSI playing its part in Irish society. I'm sure that any well created, curated museum exhibition um, showcasing the glories of GSI's 175 years would have images like I'm showing you of geological mapping observations along the coast. Uh, coastal in situ observations, and these are in situ in both the geological and the Earth's observation senses, feature strongly among the data points we have in our systems because the coast is often where we can most readily see natural exposures into the subsurface. So I'm saying we, like other geological surveys, are well versed in coastal mapping. The mapping here is from the 1850s, and the sketch on the left is by George Victor Dunoyer, a celebrated geologist and artist. And on the right, we have a painting here by Admiral Richard Bridges Beachy from the same time. Both pictures capture the sublime beauty of the Kerry coast on a rare calm day. And so the, the association with space is that scenes from one of the new Star Wars movies were filmed here on Sybil Head. So moving on about 100 years, this is an image of Ross Lair in County Wexford, an area you'll hear more about later in the day. And these GSI photographs were the first complete aerial photographic survey of the Republic of Ireland. And they were completed over the course of five years, around about the time uh, Ireland joined ESA. The photos show us a fantastic snapshot of Ireland's environment, captured at a point in time. And in many areas, this is before the real industrialization or intensification of agriculture. And these stereoscopic images are still in demand for a wide range of uses. And so this is a kind of an example of where the data doesn't, doesn't exist, we develop it. So I'm gonna skip on past our use of multispectral data for quaternary mapping and looking at landscape. And I'm not going to talk about things like our um, servicing of the bureaucratic load for um, GMES, Copernicus, and, uh, and GEO. And instead, I'm going to talk about uh, radar interferometry products combined with geological data to gain an understanding of the characteristics of the subsurface. Because here we're moving from point in time observations to observations that describe geological processes uh, over time and in space. And so in the early noughties, ESA put uh, ground motion data experts and uh, geological surveys together in the Terra Firma project. And uh, the geological process knowledge gives the essential kind of context to the radar ground motion data in space and time. And many other initiatives have stemmed from here and the soon to launch Copernicus ground motion uh, service, which can trace its lineage through these collaborations is one of these. And it will be very important that geological surveys give the required geological context to the new Copernicus Ground Motion Service to make it relevant to the widest range of stakeholders possible. In the marine domain, uh, this is a nice example of using multispectral earth observation data to derive bathymetry. The process can't generate data to the highest hydrographic standards required for say nautical charts, but it gives a very important understanding of areas which are very difficult to survey using conventional approaches. And uh, it's been shown that the technique gives very consistent results and they've been rigorously tested in a wide range of Irish coastal settings. And we see very nice agreement between the in situ data and the satellite derived data for Dublin Bay there. So we skip on to groundwater. It's a nice project that combines earth observation derived water levels monitoring and modeling of groundwater flooding. And so Thurlock's, um, and Thurlock flooding in Ireland is at times a major problem. And Water levels in these seasonal lakes and karst landscapes respond to fluctuations in the water table and have different characteristics to things like river flooding. So again, bringing together geological process knowledge, in situ monitoring data, radar earth observation, these things allow GSI to predict the extent of 10, 100, and thousand year flood events. This is a service to the OPW, the body responsible uh, for Ireland's obligations under the EU floods directive. And uh, this is a very nice um, example here showing the, the gray data uh, of the loggers, the in situ data, and the blue, which is the satellite derived data and the good agreement between the two. So just a quick recap, GSI long proud history, collaborate widely, and our knowledge of physical processes and our data sets 
allow us to interpret Earth observation data. We use an awful, awful lot more of it now, given the widespread availability of it and its reliability. Thank you very much and enjoy the day.